Callum, you, have, what's with this like invincibility complex everyone has, right? You know what I'm talking about? No. Well, everyone. <laughs> what do you mean? Shut up. What do you mean? Everyone thinks they're like invincible until suddenly they realise they're not, right? Sure. Yeah. I mean, unlucky things do happen eventually, but until then, you are indestructible, right? Yeah. You don't really worry about death or you know like anything like that or getting hurt because until it happens, you just think. It's not going to happen to me. Exactly right. It'll happen to everyone else, the other population. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and then once you have an experience, I think you kind of, these people kind of realise, oh, crap, life is pretty fragile. Yeah. Right? And this bloke, Scott Drummond, who's, he's in his 60s now, but back when he was 28, he dislocated his thumb in a skiing incident Mm. and he's gone in to do a routine surgery and the nurse, like, doing the administering there she had never done it before the doctor's like it's all right i'll walk you through it i'll walk you through it it's no dramas and it's just you know it's just a thumb dislocation as she's doing it she's opened up the valves incorrectly Mm. and this bloke scott drummond he's temporarily lost his life for 20 minutes wow just from the thumb yeah yeah from just administering the the painkillers wrongly yeah right uh yeah she's she's accidentally od'd him and obviously that would be very scarring experience for her the nurse but as well for scott drummond like that's pretty crazy Mm. you know just going in for a routine thumb dislocation surgery and then this happening. Yeah, you never think a thumb wall would actually kill someone. <laughs> it's a skiing incident, mate. <laughs> but no, nah, he recalled seeing some crazy stuff, you know, like he said, oh, I remember floating above the operating table, seeing flowers, hearing voices, stuff saying, like, it's not your time yet. And then he was like, I need to do more with my life when he came back. It's bizarre, isn't it? I saw an article recently of a hospice nurse uh, telling, like, the telltale signs of when someone goes into that realm and they start doing weird things like extra blinking or they look into corners of the room and start talking to things, stuff like that. Yeah. So it happens all the time on regular basis. Yeah, but this got us thinking more about the the near-death experiences that you might have had. And you you said you hadn't had any before? Mm, I had this one where I was on a plane and I saw a premonition and, uh, you know, the plane went down and then I woke up and then, you know, all of, Oh, wait, that's Final Destination. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Stifler was on the plane, actually. Sean William Scott. <laughs> And yeah, there's five yeah. other instances, all different ones. There was yeah. a roller coaster. We all got away with it. And <laughs> yeah. then all my friends started, you know, perishing in different ways. Yeah, yeah. Great franchise. Uh, I had two near-death experiences. One when I was, like, really little in the Gold Coast and I nearly drowned at the beach there. Yeah, jeez. And then another one when I was about 11 years old, nearly drowning in my neighbour's pool. God, you and water. <laughs> <laughs> Stick to Coca-Cola when Doesn't... you have your next drink. <laughs> Me and water don't mix, but I keep going back for more. (laughs) But we do want to ask about those near-death experiences, Adelaide. Give us a buzz now. What's your near-death experience? We'd love to hear about about how it happened, you know, how you're feeling afterwards, you know. How far did you actually go? Mm, There'd be a lot of near misses, a lot of narrow escapes. So, yeah, keen to hear it. Hope everyone's all right. But, yeah, there'd be a few pretty crazy ones. Yeah, maybe you were crossing a road, you forgot to look. Maybe you were mountain climbing, you know, and had a a close call. All the extreme sport people, the people that go skydiving regularly, Mm. you know, there'd be stuff like that that are absolutely nuts. Yeah, the people that go, like, yeah, free, like, no no harness climbing. Climbing up mountains. Oh, those people are just crazy. Insane. <laughs> I don't know if there's anyone listening that does that because I feel like it's a real niche market. It would have to be niche. I don't think many people do it. But we want to hear your near-death experiences, Adelaide. We're going to cross over to Ricky. He's in Burnside. Ricky, good morning, mate. What was your near-death experience? Um, I was out riding my bike in the hills. Yeah. I was turning right onto North East Road from Warren Road at Birdwood. Yep, yep. I had one foot on the ground with my arm out indicating... The school bus came from the left from Birdwood and just cut the corner and came straight for me. Oh, crap. I managed to jump and he went right over my bike. Right. He's run over your bike. So you managed yeah. to jump off in time, but it, the, the bike got hit. Yeah, the bike got broken into like five pieces. Wow, wow. that's scary. Ricky, what do you do? Do you just yeah, take, that a, was scary. Do, do you take a breather after that? Did you just like stand there in shock for 10 minutes? Or what happened? Um, yeah, I was kind of panicking. How do I get home? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, l- luckily, um, a friend came and got me. Yeah, that's and, crazy. And Ricky, did that did that sort of change your perspective on riding bicycles? Have you did you keep riding after that, or were you, are you too shaken up? Yeah. Um, no, I kept on riding. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, just um, 
the day after that crash, I made the final payment on my home loan, paid my house off, oh, wow. and it just would have been a waste if I died with, with the, like, the end in sight. Yeah. Hey, Ricky, thanks so much for getting involved, mate. We really appreciate your story. Okay, thank you. Cheers, Cheers mate. Hey, let's go to Richard over in Manapara. Richard, what was your near-death experience? Yeah, my, my near-death experience was um, more medically related. Yeah. Yep. Um, obviously, I'm still here, so it all worked out. Um, but I had a weird disease that I was basically paralyzed for about a, a month. Wow, a wow. month. And while they were um, trying to figure out what was going on, they sent me for an MRI and they gave me this contrast stuff to um, so they could see better. Yeah. And it made me want to vomit, oh. except the nurses had all left the room. And I was paralyzed lying on this MRI bed and, well, nobody was there to oh, manage my wow. airway. So you were about to choke. Uh, you were you were you were on your back, were you? Yeah, lying Jeez. on my back on this narrow little MRI bed. Oh man, that's and terrifying. I'm realizing this is what's going to happen, and I'm, like most people, you want to turn, but yeah. paralyzed, so I can't really turn. Yeah. Richard, what happened then? Did a but nurse come weird. straight in? Uh, not really. As I was lying there for a couple of minutes, realizing this is going to go. Oh my god! Um, and then. Realizing that if I do manage to turn with a little bit of movement I had left, I was going to basically fall off the bed and break my nose on the floor. Um, so I was like, well, it's better than choking. Yeah. And then, like, luckily, like 15 seconds, 30 seconds before the actually vomited, the nurse actually walked in. Wouldn't oh. believe me, but literally, as she brought the bowl to, for me to vomit into, she um, oh, wow. I, literally puked straight at, right at right there and then as you brought the ball to me absolute luck that they were just yeah. coming through at that time that's a really close call and, and richard um what was the what was the name of the disease you had the rare one uh it's just something called guillain barre syndrome so okay basically i just got the flu yeah and my immune system just went haywire and then weeks afterwards it just stopped all my nerves just shut down yeah, for, that's for about a crazy month. one. Well, Richard, we hope you're better now, mate. Thanks so much for getting involved in the show this morning. Thank you. Cheers, Cheers mate. Good hey, we got uh, Ashley in Everston Gardens. Tell us, wrap it up. What was the near-death experience? So everyone's okay. No injuries from this. But yeah, yeah. let's go back to about 2005. I'm nine. My brother's about seven. We go to the Royal Adelaide show with my mum. Uh, get on the crazy coaster. Oh, yeah. uh, he should have, in hindsight, been in the middle, but he was actually on the end. And we've come around one of the last really sharp turns, which has pushed his butt off the seat and is actually holding on just by the bar that keeps you in. Really? Oh, my so God. So we, yeah, we were all kind of cuddling because we were quite young. We were all kind of cuddling and had our arms around each other to begin with. But yeah. the force of going around that corner has slipped his butt and is just holding on by the bars. Like, me and my mum have reached over and pulled him back in, but... Yeah, it wasn't, like, fun for the last 30 seconds of that ride whatsoever. That's no. the worst. That's literally the biggest fear when you hop onto a roller coaster, that, yeah. oh, geez, it could be a bit loose. That's you some know, final they... destination. Yeah, it is. They haven't <laughs> pushed it in properly. Jeez, does your brother remember it? Uh, only vaguely, not as much as me and my mum, but he does, yeah, remember a little bit of it. <laughs> and at, at, how old did you say he was at the time? Did you say five? He would have been about seven. I okay. was nine, so he yeah, have been about seven. But he was quite a smaller little seven-year-old. He wasn't quite big at that stage. His sure. towers over me now is about six foot four, but at the time he was just, yeah, he was tiny. <laughs> Jeez, that is... he, he passed the height restriction, so that was all good. He just should have been in the middle. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, did he did he realise in the moment what was going on as well, or did he just think sure. it's part of the ride? For sure, for okay. sure. part of the ride. No, no. <laughs> Jesus, it's exhilarating. No. Yeah. He knew way what was up like the fear in his face yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely ashley thank you so much for getting involved we appreciate it all good thanks boys thank you tom we want to play a little bit of a game it got i guess it got initiated two weeks ago yeah and uh we want to keep it going and go back and forth but it's pretty much called be careful what you put on the internet because it could come back and bite you on the ass in our show yes <laughs> <laughs> we need to come up with an acronym we need to make the acronym for that and yeah, just spell we do. it out you know it's a lot it's probably one of the longer game that's, titles we've played <laughs> that's, a, that's a later problem yeah <laughs> but uh pretty much it is a public service a duty i guess we're doing to everyone else to say hey you know when you put something up online it could stay there forever and it 
it could be embarrassing. So we want to give examples of stuff that each other have put online mm. that, yes, it is a little bit embarrassing and a good example not to have it on the internet. It is embarrassing, but we need to make, make aware that you do have a digital footprint out there and you should be careful what you're putting up on the internet because, you know, later in life it could stop you from getting the job that you're going for. You yeah. know, just something silly you put up on the internet. Exactly. So there is a serious undertone to it, but... Uh, we are picking a lot of audio from our olden <laughs> days of the podcast when we were, you know, just stupid 17, Idiots. 18 year olds. You know what's funny as well? Just, yeah, at the time you think, wow, this would be really funny. And we sent these off as demos to people. <laughs> like, the fact that we did these segments. The fact that we got a job in radio is beyond <laughs> me. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like we're doing a scared straight program doing yeah. this segment, you know. But uh, this. Bit of audio, Tom. It's uh, so it's your turn. Yeah, this week. I stitched you up. Now you're gonna come yeah. back and stitch me up. So found something embarrassing that you said. It is actually from around 2020 to 2021. So a little That's bit later. Annoyingly, not that long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, Should have uh, known better. Let's hear it. All right, here it is. Uh, no, basically, I was in I was in Roxy's the other day, and uh, I had this girl sending off some pretty strong yeah. signals towards me. And I wasn't that interested, and I was sending off some subtle ones. You know, let her down gently. Yeah. Uh, she wasn't picking it up. So, so how'd you go about it? Like, how did you? What did you do? <laughs> well, I said I was gonna go get some water. Uh, so I left, got some water, drank it, hid in the bathroom for five minutes. Yeah. And then I just left. No, I really. <laughs> Just well, left. <laughs> I hear she has a MySpace page called Tom's a Bastard. <laughs> she constantly posts. Yeah, that is uh, that is not uh, not what I thought it was going to be. Yeah. <laughs> she's still at Roxy's. If you see a skeleton of a girl there, <laughs> malnourished yeah. and, uh, you know, she's just been waiting for you the whole time. I don't even remember that. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> you don't even remember what a pig, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Straight from the horse's mouth. Yeah. Tom, there's a few uh, little moments in your life where you realise, shit, I'm becoming like my parents. Mm, it's a sad day when you realise, oh, mm. God, I am them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and everyone know. goes through it at one point. I don't know when the age is when that happens. I feel like, you know, when you're still 18, 19, 20, I don't think you're doing anything that's really like your parents. I feel like, you know, we're both 24 yeah. I think that that's probably the age where it starts to creep in, the mid-20s when you settle down a little bit. Yeah, 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 a little bit. You're not you're not going out every single night anymore. Yeah, you know, exactly. You're, you're staying at home throughout the week, which means there's, there's just less to do. Which <laughs> means, yeah, you fall into old habits. Yeah. I, I, you know what I reckon it is? I reckon it's like growing up seeing this. It's like ingrained in your brain. So when... When you're when you're at home doing sort of nothing, you you just follow that old habit that's yeah, yeah. like in the back of your head. What have you seen someone else do? Who have you been around the most in your life? Oh, my dad, my mum. Yeah, you know, and you do their kind of behaviours. But one huge one that I've started doing where I think crap is like my dad is uh, I've been falling asleep on the couch more <laughs> times in the week than not. And it's one of those that at maybe four in the morning, I'll wake up and I'll have a crook neck and be yeah. like, what the hell happened? And then go to my actual bed and have an even worse sleep. <laughs> and the re <laughs> and my roommate, Tamara, who I'm with, she comes out and she's like, why are you on the couch? Why are you asleep? Like, why wouldn't you just go to bed? And I was like, oh, my God. This reminds me of all the years I watched my dad fall asleep on the couch and my mum coming out and being like, just go to bed, Mark. And he's like, nah, I love it here. And then just like falling asleep every five minutes and this berating argument happening. There's so, nothing good coming from sleeping on the couch. And you just piss off everyone. You know, you, you snore, you make noises, exactly as my dad had done and would annoy all of us in the house. And now yeah. I'm that guy. I'm falling asleep on the couch with the TV blaring. Yeah, some of the habits I've found myself Self falling into is uh, my dad paces a lot. He paces up and down the house quite a bit. Yeah. And now I've found sometimes if I'm if I'm like waiting for something to cook, you know, I just start walking up and down the house. Just don't know why. Really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I could just sit there and watch something probably, but I'm like, nah. If, especially if I'm just doing the microwave. If I'm putting something in the microwave for like a minute or two, I'm like, yeah, just walk up and down the house. So I was gonna say, if your mum's <laughs> cooking or something, I would really put me off. <laughs> that would really put me off as the cook in the house if like who I was about to serve was yeah. pacing up and down like it's a prison court. Yard. Yeah, another one is like sayings. Like uh, <laughs> I'll say, uh, I, I've caught myself in recent times saying forward. 
oh, here yeah. and there instead yeah. of forehead. He's a big forehead guy. Dad's a forehead guy. Right. I don't know what it is, why, God. but he's a forehead guy. I really, I really don't want to get to the point where I start sounding like my grandpa. I feel like that's the next stage <laughs> where he would call people cobber. Oh, and I've heard oh, it slip. Oh, I've heard it slip out of my mouth a few times, <laughs> but I won't let it. I won't let cobber ever come out again. We're gonna open up the text line here, Adelaide. When did you realise you're becoming your parents? And yeah. Somebody's texted in here uh, asking about my dad. How how my dad's magpie is going? Back in the day, dad uh, started feeding this magpie, and it came to the house every single day. They used to hang out with it. Mm. Uh, good mates. He held it once. And then they went away on a cruise uh, to give you some to, to let you know what happened to the magpie. They went on a cruise. I uh, did not feed it every day, and it's yeah. never come back since. You so. got jealous. You saw the magpie <laughs> playing playing catch with your dad outside with the baseball mitt, and you thought, "Nah, that looks way too sentimental." Is the new son? I disposed of the magpie. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> he is dead. <laughs> we got this text here. Uh, when I. <laughs> Got the magpie here. is fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> RSP, 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 the RSPCA is calling up. No, 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 they don't need to. They don't need to. The magpie is fine. It still haunts. I hear the haunting sounds of it still, and I think Dad's out there with the mitt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got this text here, Tom. Uh, when I started uh, realising I dress for comfort, not fashion. Oh, that's a big okay. one. Nice shoes, you know, classic sneakers, stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> This text has just come through. I knew I was like my dad when I saw him in the shower. Ooh, yeah. That could go either way as well. Is that a good or a bad thing? <laughs> <laughs> the dad could be uh, our... <laughs> hey, let's, get, let's go over to the phones. we got Maddie on the line here. Maddie, when did you realise you're becoming your parents? Yeah, morning, boys. Morning, uh, mate. I've worked out I've, I've turned into my mother uh, when it comes to road rage. Road rage? Oh, I've, I've, yeah. just, I've just lost it. Well, are you doing the verbal <laughs> road rage or are you just sticking up the finger? Oh, I'm flipping the bird, mate. Verbal, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know what? My, I, I don't know what it is, but it's always the mums that are big on the road rage, and I, I think, I think she's yeah. passed it on to me too a little bit, Maddie. From time to time, you're not alone. Oh yeah, especially when they're not doing the uh, the correct speed limit. Mm. Just, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Don't get me started. Falling behind <laughs> a bit. Yeah, <laughs> I can feel the rage coming on. Bridget in Glenelg, when did you realise you're becoming like your parents? Bridget. Oh, hey. Sorry. I um, I realised I'm like my dad when I started liking fishing. I feel like it used to be super boring and you just wait around for hours. And then now I'm like, oh, my goodness, yes, and peace and quiet. I don't even care if there's no fish. I wonder, Take me out fishing. I wonder if that's anything to do with when you're older and fishing, you're just getting around the beers a bit more. So it makes it a bit more <laughs> enjoyable. <laughs> yeah. Full <laughs> esky. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, got the, got the esky for the fish, but oh, no, there's no room for the fish. It's full of beer. Good on you, Bridget. Hey, we've got Kel in Kersbrook. Uh, can you tell us, when did you realise you were like your parents? Yeah, morning, guys. G'day. Um, I um, realised that I'm more and more like my mother when I get super crazy excited over changing the sponge in the kitchen. Ooh, a fresh sponge. <laughs> oh, yeah. what, do you, what do you like about the fresh sponge? <laughs> Is uh, the how, how quickly it cleans or just the new feel of it? The firmness. Uh, both of those, but then I also cannot handle and lose my biscuit when I... Somebody's actually managed to use it before me and not in the correct way. Like, they've just dunked it straight into something greasy, and I'm like, oh, no. So you like to have (laughs) first first blood on the uh, sponge. You like to unwrap it like a Christmas present. Yeah, and I like to, like, put heaps of soap on it and make it all frothy and Mm. clean. Yeah, it's not good when it goes. Speaking my language. (laughs) Kel, what do you... (laughs) What if somebody else, you know, gets a, gets a new sponge in the household and they use it first and you still miss out on that first go of the sponge? Is that less annoying because they went and got the sponge? And nobody in my house changes the sponge. Oh, my God. Yeah, like, uh, yeah really? you start, start like interrogating. Nobody changes the toilet roll but the mother. You know? Start interrogating everyone. I noticed the pasta bake tray doesn't have any sauce on it. Did someone clean with the new sponge? Tom, we like to be educators on this show. I thought you were going to say edgy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, most, ed- well, really, yeah. I mean, this. Uh, what I'm about to talk about is a little bit edgy, so hold your horses. It is also scientific and educational, so, yeah, be prepared for that. <laughs> but but uh, pretty much a book has come out, Tom, and it's from a doctor, Dr. Sprankle, 
who Dr. has... Dr. Sprankle. Dr. Sprankle is on the case and pretty right. much he's recently done a whole list of kind of around the world scenarios of things hospitals have seen people, particularly men, put up their back door. Oh, okay, yeah, right. And this is all the book is about. Imagine, you, you can write a book about anything these days, and yeah. this is what he's gone for. You can. I've seen a book of uh, all the pubs in Australia. Yeah, Someone yeah. just wrote a book, went to each pub in Australia and wrote a book about it. Great research uh, <laughs> yeah. investigation there. Right. But, yeah, so, so what, you've got a list of some of the things, have you? Yeah, and uh, I will tell you, it gets pretty freaky. So the first one, they saw a bunch of happy toys mm. from McDonald's. Right. So that's a big one. Uh other than that, <laughs> you gotta over over like decades of Happy Meal toys. Like, no. did we go from like Grimace all the way up to like the Incredibles car? No, it's you not know? a collection. <laughs> it would have been one and dusted. <laughs> but uh, other than that, coffee mugs were a big one. Coffee, oh. coffee mugs. Can you imagine that? The base, like the how big that is. Yeah, yeah, nah, the nah, not about that, that one. Yeah, nah, terrible. I'm looking at my coffee mug now. Oh god, never be able to drink a coffee again. <laughs> no, I will. It'll be okay. <laughs> Uh, other than that, we have a few of the classics. A screwdriver came up a few times. Okay, understand that more than a coffee hey, mug. Understand Still, that more. Well, it seems like an, an easier feat. It's, but, a prob- uh, it's probably easier, but I reckon it would be more painful. Classic tradesman. He's put it in the back pocket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot my work belt today. I had to compromise. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like an ass MacGyver. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, then it gets really weird, Tom. So one of them is a... It's an eight-inch uh, First World War era artillery be- uh, shell. Right. So a bit of a bit of weaponry there. <laughs> and this then, one's for you, Grandpa. <laughs> it, yeah, it was like kind of like a miniature bomb. And he said he fell onto right. it. He, he, fell, oh, he fell onto fell it. fell onto it when he was gardening. Okay. I will let you know as well, a lot of these excuses end with, I slipped and fell. Yeah. It seems like the classic everyone goes to. This one here, in 2020, a 30-year-old man in China had a whole fish removed because he accidentally sat on it. <laughs> oh, he's taken the piss And now. the specific fish species <laughs> is between 12 to 16 inches long. Oh. <laughs> Was the fish frozen? Was it a Tasmanian <laughs> trout? Yeah. <laughs> Day after day, you know, if you don't bring in your lunch to work, you sort of, you, you, we, we go and buy it. We get up so early, we, we end up not eating usually till about 12 o'clock some yeah, days. Yep. And it gets to a point where you're like, I need to go eat. So if you don't bring in lunch, you've got to go for a walk. But the issue is tiring out so many places around work, you don't always feel like going to the easy places. So you go for a little bit of a stroll. Sure. And yesterday, oh, I was just, oh, I reckon I walked for about 10, 15 minutes till I got to the point where I couldn't take it anymore and I called you for some advice. Yeah, yeah, hotline. I need, a fo- <laughs> I need to phone a friend. <laughs> what do I eat? The Callum hotline. If anyone needs Callum's number, if you're struggling to figure out what you want for lunch, <laughs> let us know on the text line. Uh, but no, no, I'd be happy to be... What, what was it like, the old timely back in the day you'd ring up the person for movie times? Yeah, yeah, you'd be like the Guy Fieri of that. <laughs> yeah, I'll just tell you where you should go eat. What suburb are you in? Oh, yeah. No, the yeah. Euros place down there is pretty good. <laughs> Doing research. <laughs> (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So I called you up and I'm like, mate, I need some help. I can't figure out what I want to eat. And straight away, great suggestion. You say, how about Zambrero? Yeah. You know, bit of freshness. Easy. Filling, easy, cheap. And I say, yeah, great, great idea. We love Zambrero. So went down there and I thought, I don't know what I want, but I wanted to get something I don't usually get. So I, I went for something that I haven't had in years. The Dos Cappers. Oh, the Dos Cappers are great. They are really good. It's so like, the Dos Cappers, it's like a hard taco with then a soft little tortilla wrapped around it and you get two of them. Yeah, it's great. And it when I got it and I took that first bite, it sparked this memory in me <laughs> of the last time I had Dos Cappers. Mm. And it was back in about 2018 when I was working at the pub and a person I was working with was like, can you go get me some dinner from Zambrero and I was like yeah absolutely no dramas I'll take a break I used to love getting people their dinner because I just meant I didn't have to work for like 15 minutes sure yeah just take a hot (laughs) minute go for a walk where do you want me to go do you want me to go all the way to semaphore (laughs) there's a nice takeaway joint there's a nice takeaway (laughs) joint about 50 minutes away I'll I'll go there so I'm like what do you want from Zambrero she's like I'll write down the order she writes it down I get to Zambrero I haven't actually looked at it and I'm looking it's like Dos Cappers times I, I. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, it's either 11 or 2 for Roman numerals. Sure. And I had no idea at that point what Dos Cappers were. 
and I didn't want to stuff up by just by getting not enough. Mm. So I went and got 11. 11 serves 11. of Dos Capas, which is 22 tacos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you double it. So that's, geez, 22. And wow. <laughs> so, so I've come back to work with a massive bag, right? She's like, she would have thought you were an idiot. <laughs> yeah, I was a naive 18 year old. <laughs> were you new to the job as well? Oh, I was probably about a couple of months in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Enough for someone to heinously judge you and talk talk smack behind your back. Like, can you believe he got Absolutely. 22 tacos? So I ended up feeding the whole the whole staff that night with <laughs> Dos Cappers. You know what? The plus side, as much as they'd be like, oh, this guy's an idiot, they would yeah, probably yeah. praise you and think, geez, free dinner out of this. This guy's not too bad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If only that's what they thought. <laughs> <laughs> I heard what they said. <laughs> How wrong was the order, Adelaide? We're talking, you know, have you put in a special request on Uber Eats and they've just absolutely mucked it up? Mm, yeah, it could be classic drive throughs you know, heaps of stuff-ups there. I've done so many online orders mm. for cool little gimmicky gadgets, lights, things like that. They just never come through. The starting off, someone did text and saying, ordered a gluten-free pizza, got four days bed rest <laughs> with excruciating stomach pain instead. Oh, Jeez. Not good. Usually hey, the gluten-free is meant to be better for you. I think they messed up the gluten-free, <laughs> yeah. mate. <laughs> got the, yeah, true. Got the wrong one. Yeah. 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 Hey, we had someone from upstairs come down and tell us just last night they ordered a couple six inches, uh, you know, a ham one and a meatballs one. Mm. And they were saying they messed up, like they, they did the meatballs and the ham, but they messed up all the fillings on each one. So she got garlic aioli with the meatballs and marinara with the ham. Yeah, yeah. Obviously a mad scientist just running around the subway kitchen there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> add a chicken schnitzel onto the ham one. you got a palmy right there. You'll be fine. I feel like but... subway can't really go wrong anyway. It sounds like, you know, it's a bit messy, but hey, it's still probably pretty good. Yeah. Hey, let's cross over to Happy Valley. We got Mark on the line. Mark, good morning, mate. How wrong was your order? Yeah, how you going, boys? Uh, yeah, yeah, good, mate. We got the mates and they used to bring up about the KFC. I used to work part time there many years ago as a kid. Yeah. And um, yeah, they bring up and order a heap of chicken and then cancel it with about an hour to go. So I'd take the free chicken home and they'd sit around the corner wait for me. We'd eat chicken all night. Oh, really? Oh, that's smart ass. <laughs> how much chicken are we talking, Mark? Oh, about 130 pieces. 130? <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, the dog had to get a, yeah, the dog had to get a stomach pump because I ate too much chicken too. Oh, my God. <laughs> Mark, I'm sure you were very popular back then, then. <laughs> oh, I, I was, actually, especially at high school. Yeah, everyone's like, did you hear Colonel Sanders has moved into the block? Yeah, yeah he's resurrected. <laughs> Good on you, Mark. Thanks for getting involved, mate. Hey, we got Jasmine in Hallett Cove. Jasmine, how wrong was the order? Um... Hey, good morning, Tom and Callum. Good morning. I did morning. a good one. Yeah. Um, I ordered what I thought was a serve of 12 Momos, which are little uh, Himalayan dumplings, if right. you haven't had them. Yeah. No, I ordered 12 serves. 12 oh. serves? <laughs> and how, how many is in the serve? 10. 10. Jeez. 10. Jeez. Crap. And the worst thing is, Worst thing is, I'm just a tap and pay girl. You don't look yeah. at the price. You don't yeah. want to know how much you're spending on food. No, absolutely not. So, so you tap, you pay, you get home, you open the bag, and you go, why is it really heavy? Oh, that's a whole lot of momos. So the good thing <laughs> is, there's still a couple of frozen lots in the freezer. So when you come home a bit dusty after a night out, chuck them in the microwave. Yeah, 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 chuck it yeah. with a bit of me garang. Goes oh, all right. Someone, yep. someone opening yep. your freezer and be like, did you win a lifetime supply <laughs> of Momos? What competition was that? <laughs> It'd be a good one. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Jasmine, that is insane. Hey, were there other people that were eating the Momos? Or was it just, just you yeah, getting through them? No, thankfully my son loves them as well, so he's good. in on it. Hey, Happy days. <laughs> Favourite parent there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Good on you, Jasmine. Thanks for getting involved, mate. We appreciate it. Thanks, see you. Cheers. So uh, we're doing something a little bit new. We did it last week. Pretty much we want to point out a few of the weird things we saw throughout the week that caught our attention and we just want to have a little bit of a chat about it. Yeah, they've stuck with us. So here's our weird weekly wrap-up. So, Tom, I went to the bathroom when I got up from work the other day and uh, it's pitch black. Yeah. And I go to the bathroom door and as I'm about to walk to the door, I almost slipped on something. My my foot rolled on it and I almost had an accident. <laughs> it was a disco ball. What? <laughs> 
And I was like, how In the your hell? own bathroom. Yeah, Sorry. yeah. And I was like, how the hell? I didn't even realise we had a disco ball at this new house, but I almost slipped on it. And I thought, geez, this would be a really bad predicament because at some point, someone must have slipped mm. on a banana peel and then all the jokes for years and years <laughs> yeah. happened about that in movies and everything. Games, and I was like, TV, yeah. Is this the modern day banana peel? Me slipping on a disco ball and everyone's going to talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> and then I then I picked it up and I was like, well, I'll put, a, I'll put it on the couch or something. And my phone flashlight accidentally zapped it so the whole room went up into this disco <laughs> as I'm trying to navigate this dark house. So my Jeez. housemate probably thought I was having a rave before work. Disco Callum yeah. on the scene. <laughs> Callum, I'm, uh, I'm rewinding back to St. Paddy's Day, which oh, yeah. was on uh, Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. yeah, so I thought, I'm, I'm, you know, last night of the Fringe as well, I thought I'd go suss out the scenes, what's going on, and I didn't quite make it to the city because um, I live in Norwood. I went to this pub, Finn McCool's, which oh, yeah. is just on classic the parade. Irish yeah, pub. Classic Irish pub. I thought I'd suss it out, see the vibe. It was going all absolutely off. Everyone's there dressed up. Mm. But then there was a bloke there who was dressed in absolutely nothing except knee-high boots. Yeah. Lucky, like, four-leaf clover underpants. Right. And a massive, like, fake beard and wig and uh, green top hat. And that was all he was wearing. No top, no pants. Was he there with anyone? Nah. No, nah, he no was just a, and and he wasn't like a jovial bloke either. He was just sitting at the bar, right, <laughs> having a right. pint. You expect someone like that to be doing a few of the party games or a or a yeah, chug yeah, or yeah. something. This is this is like nine thirty well, as just, well. Like it's pretty early on. Yeah, he's just sitting there by himself. Just, just sitting there by yeah. himself, you know, having a having a pint of Guinness. Hey, luck of the Irish, I guess. Maybe <laughs> maybe his day turned out a bit better. <laughs> yeah, I thought, what the hell is going on? I watched him for about twenty minutes. Just didn't move from the bar. Oh, so that is someone you would people watch. 100%. I wouldn't, <laughs> take, I wouldn't take my eyes off the man with the knee-high boots. I wasn't quite game enough to go have a chat with yeah. him. <laughs> <laughs> and there, there, that's every all the weird stuff we've seen this week. Yeah, it's pretty bizarre. Stay tuned next week for our, weirdly, our weekly weird wrap-up. Wrap up, yeah. <laughs>